night, good night, good night to everyone who are tuning, tuning in with us tonight. This is our first night hosting you. Yes, good night. I am so excited for the program tonight. I'm your host, Nathan. And I am your hostess, Natalia. But before we start, let's pray. Welcome to this service that we are about to have. May everyone bow their heads and close their eyes as we have prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you for this day, dear Lord. Thank you for keeping us safe, bringing us through the day safe before your mercies, O Lord. Please be with everyone, each one of us, as we view their Lord and as we sit here to hear your word, O Lord. Please help us to touch our hearts, help us to play on our conscience so that we all be convicted, dear Lord. Hear your message and understand it so that we will be able to make decisive decisions in our daily lives, dear Lord, to live for you. Help all of us to always keep you on our minds. Help us to understand and enjoy this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful prayer that was. Let's invite Victoria and Marceline to welcome us to our program, then our praise and worship. Good evening to one and all. I say the time to be happy is now. The place to be happy is here on this platform. And the way to be happy is to make others happy as we, the Children Adolescents Ministry, in collaboration with the ASI Mission, have a big heaven down here. Yes, here, right here, right now. Special welcome goes out to our president, Pastor Moses, the administrators, and all the directors and pastors. Let me pause now to extend an exuberant welcome to Pastor Fafan, our children's ministry director of the South Caribbean Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. Also to all of our teachers who was very instru instrumental in putting this program together. Also our family and friends who were specially invited via Zoom as the link was shared. Now to all the brethren from near and far, what you're telling yourself, or rather, what yourself telling you? That I have forgotten you? Oh no, I have not. So without any further hesitation, a favorable welcome goes out to each one of you as I invite you to sit back, relax, and fasten your seatbelts as we, the children as adolescents, take you on an, on an inspirational journey. This evening, I must say, if I were a bee, I would have given you one of the stinging welcomes. If I were an eel, I would have given you a shocking welcome. But happy to say, I am none of those, but just a child of the king. Oh yes, God can trust me with greatness. Now I bid you all a royal welcome.
am sanctified in him. That song service was heavenly. Wow, I was blessed. I want to join with Victoria and welcome you to the crusade tonight. Like we were saying earlier, we are so excited to be hosting you. We won't be here with you every night, but we will have fun while we are. Exactly. So remember, we all decided to have a letter for every night, right? Well, the letter for tonight is E. Hmm. I wonder what word we can come up with with the letter E. Hmm, let's see. E, E, eager. We could use eager. Eager as in eager to work with Jesus, eager to serve him wherever and whenever he wants. Right. That, is, that sounds great. As young people, we must always be eager and effective. So we have two words tonight then. Eager and effective. We must eagerly and effectively work for God. So whatever he wants us to do, we must do it. But anyway, we have to go to do something else now. Well, last night was our first quiz, and it was really amazing and exciting. And tonight, we have our second quiz. I really hope the audience is ready. Yes, well, if you aren't ready, now you know to pay attention tonight, because there will be a quiz every single night. And guess what? We would have prizes for those who get the most answers correct. So now it's quiz time. And right after our quiz, we would have issues live. It's your girl, Amelie, and I'm back, yes, with another quiz. But before we move on to the other quiz, we are going to give you guys the answers for last night. So, question number one, the answer was, Adam and Eve were thrown out of the Garden of Eden. Could you imagine that? They were thrown out. Answer for number two. The opposite of obey is disobey. They were thrown out of the Garden of Eden because they were very disobedient. Answer for number three. Yes, Satan does think that the world belongs to him. So, he has this great idea that the world belongs to him, but when Jesus comes, the world will be Jesus' own, okay? Answer for number four. God's plan is to rescue us from this earth, not to kill us. His plan is to rescue us from this earth once we live the right life. Because we all know we can't make it to heaven just like that. I mean, come on, come on, sense, right? Answer for number five. If we live for God, we will suffer persecution. We all know that the end time is coming. So we need to study God's word, but living for Christ, not gone, just be any breezy, breezy life. Yes, we will be killed for believing in Jesus Christ. 
So, without further ado, let's go on to the questions for tonight. Okay, so remember that you are going to need your pen and paper or pencil and paper. And remember the email that you are sending your answers to is trini.contingent at gmail.com. trini.contingent at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's begin. First question. What was the meaning of a Limelech's name? What was the meaning of a Limelech's name? Five, four, three, two, one. Question number two. What was the result of a Limelech's decision to go to Moab with his family? What was the result of a Limelech's decision to go to Moab with his family? Five, four, three, two, one. Question number three. When Naomi protested that her season of usefulness was over, did Ruth stay or did she leave? When Naomi protested that her season of usefulness was over, did Ruth stay or did she leave? Five, four, three, two, one. Question number four. Can your usefulness expire in the cause of God? Can your usefulness expire in the cause of God? Five, four, three, two, one. Last question, but not least. Does God still love you even after you have sinned? Does God still love you even after you have sinned? Five, four, three, two, one. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's quiz. I will be back for sure. Bye. my meat. Now they always say that your meat must be your soul meat. So I'm guessing that we must both be connected. We must feel that form of connection, that thing, that spark when we come together. But I also understand that your meat must represent you. So then me, I want a woman that is voluptuous, right? I want a woman that when she's around, people know that she's there. And people feel the absence when she's gone. I want a woman that is brave and focused and strong and dominating and all of these things. But really and truly, what should I want when I am looking for a meat? Traditional virtues. Those things that they tell us you must always look for. The things that your grandmother or your grandfather holds key to their person. What should you do? Should you look for a woman that is modern? Or a woman that is connected spiritually with God? Or is it possible to get both of them together in one woman? Or in one man for the females? What do I do? What do I do when looking for my mate? What do I do when looking for my soul mate? If that person is for me, then that means how one person out there for me. And how do I know when I have met the one. Hello. Hello, you can hear me? Yeah. Right. Well, I have the answers to those questions, right? 
You see, as youths, we just generally focus on the physical appearance. Yes, it is very important to do that. But you know, in messages to young people, Mrs. LNG White says that this process actually determines our it determines out eternal destiny. So we need to take it very seriously and prayerfully. Definitely, character and life goals should be most important, as that is what will matter in overcoming difficult situations. Physical appearance can change in a flash, so um, so can riches and wealth. So come on, be smart, people. What it is, be smart. That response by our caller was right on time, and that was a younger person, but not an older adult. Exactly. It's so good to know that we have more and more examples of the potential of the youth and the positivity and good work that they are doing. We want to thank the older adults who support us no matter what and continue to keep us in their prayers. Yes, and all the adults who are here supporting now, we would really like to thank you for coming out and supporting the adolescents of our churches. So we will now move into a musical break then have our Bible focus for tonight. Well, it's really the scripture reading, but I think that Bible focus sounds nicer. I mean, it has a ring to it, don't you think? Mm, not really, but okay, we could call it that if you want. You may not know when, 
John chapter 15 verses 12 to 17 This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made un known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. As God, I close as I say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to come before you to thank you for so many of the blessings that you have granted us with, Lord. Sometimes we forget how lucky we are, Lord. I also want to come before you to ask for forgiveness for so many of the sins that we have committed. Sometimes our brothers and sisters forget that it is you that we must come to to repent our sins so that we may have a clean slate and we will rebuild our lives in, a, in the right way and stay on the right path, Lord. I also want to come before you to ask us that we will have protection, Lord, in this time of trouble, Lord. Everything that is going on in the country with COVID, with all the other elements, Lord, please help us that we will stay safe and that we will think about our brothers and sisters while we are on our work, while we are walking the streets, you know, we remember them in our minds and in our hearts, Lord. I also want to bring before you our personal relationships, Lord. Our relationships that we have with our mothers, with our fathers, with our significant others, with our friends, Lord. And the most important relationship of all, you, Lord. Everyone knows that it is... It is at our right benefit that we have a good relationship with you, Lord. You should be the foundation of all friendships and all interactions that we have with people, Lord. You are where it starts off with. This is where we learn how to communicate better with others, Lord, and how we should treat each other, Lord. Sometimes we forget how we must treat each other, Lord, which is why there is so much hate in this country, Lord. And in this time of trouble, hate is not a feeling that we should have amongst our brothers and sisters. So at this time, I just, I want you to wipe our slate clean, Lord, that we will have a new beginning, so that each and every one of us will have a chance at salvation. So at this time, I just want to ask that we continue to enjoy the rest of our Sabbath day, and we keep on remembering how good and gracious you are to us, Lord. And please help us to keep a song in our hearts and in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now for the time we've all been waiting for, the sermon. Tonight, we have a powerful message by Brother Daniel. All right, I talk enough. Natalia, tell us some more about Daniel. Okay, so Daniel Nelson is 20 years of age, and he was born in the Twin Island of Trinidad and Tobago. 
As a young child, his parents made sure that he was able to have a great relationship with the Lord, whether it be through church camp or other activities. He is now in the audiovisual department and treasury of San Juan Estate Church, and he is also currently working towards getting a certificate in networking to become a network engineer. Also, he is a part of the missionary group ASI Mission 2000 and beyond. So now that you have all heard about our speaker tonight, we will now have the theme song done by ASI Mission 2000 and beyond. And the very next voice you will hear will be that of evangelist Daniel Nelson. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Special good night to all the boys and girls here tonight. To all our visiting friends, welcome. You are here because God wants you to hear that you can trust him with your future. He guarantees that a future with him will be far different from your present situation. Sometimes it looks like there is no good news. There is continued crisis in the Middle East, Israel, and Palestine, locked in another flare-up of centuries-old grievances. Economies of nations, great and small, are in trouble. A COVID-19 pandemic, a pestilence that the Bible predicted in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, has disrupted the entire world. 
COVID has us cowering in fear of our lives. Disasters, both natural and man-made, poverty, cruelty by those who have more against those who have none. Cyber criminals are flexing their muscles and building wealth for their crimes. In May of this year, the largest pipeline in the USC was held up for ransom for over a week by Darkseid, a criminal hacker group based in Eastern Europe. They got 4.4 million in ransom money for one week of criminal activity. The June 10th, 2021 edition of the Wall Street Journal carried a story that an Eastern European group known as Ryuk has hit at least 235 facilities, raking in more than $100 million in the United States alone in 2020. And that is just what they are aware of. It is said that these groups hit where it hurts. They hit you where you are most vulnerable. They target hospitals. They shut down monitors tracking patients' vital signs. They break into large organizations, computers, and install malicious software that lock every single file, forcing you to pay millions for access of your own information. What kind of world are we living in? What kind of future is there for us? The Bible tells us that these things are merely the beginning of sorrow. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to 9 and 13. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But to the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. While the hearts of men are failing for fear, I want to let you know tonight, friends, that to the child of God, there is reason to hope. God never leaves his children without a sure guide. He has done it before, and he will do it again. The word of God can be trusted. It is our sure guide to navigate the turbulent times. Dear Heavenly Loving God, I thank you for this lovely Sunday, Lord Father. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to share your word, dear Lord Father, to be able to bring this message to those who were maybe on their way out from your dear Lord Father, who were maybe thinking of leaving your side, dear Lord Father. I want to bring this message to them, dear Lord Father. In your name's sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, everyone is concerned about where we are headed and about what will happen in the future. Once you accept God's guide, you gain a new perspective. You can see world events in a new light. Yes, friends, a power greater that man is in charge of the affairs of man. He reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God never leaves his people clueless. In this book, we call the Bible, God has placed his map to navigate these turbulent times. We are not destined to shipwreck and die without hope. In every point in history, God made sure that his word was transmitted safely to the next generation and to the next generation. Some paid the price of slavery, some even paid the price of imprisonment, and some paid the price of death. To get you and me 
the knowledge of the true and living God. In every age, God needs men, women, boys and girls in whom he can place the sacred trust of making him known in their generation. That is why we are here. Can God trust you and me with his greatness? Tonight, friends, we journey to Palestine. The year was 603 BC. Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah, and at the end of that military campaign, he marched 10,000 captives back to Babylon in chains. He took the brightest and the best. He took those who had their prime physically and intellectually. He took them for the sole purpose of training them to serve the Babylonian gov government. Daniel and his three friends were from the royal family and nobility. According to the historian Josephus, Daniel and his three friends were from the family of Zedekiah, the last king of Judah. Friends, that is exactly what the devil does. He comes by and takes those from God's royal family and for the express purpose of serving his kingdom. Fellow young people, whatever he is telling you, whatever advantages Satan is offering you tonight, to walk in disobedience to your God, there is no future with him. You walk away from your protection in your father's kingdom and you have signed up for bondage. Somebody here tonight may be saying the hurt is too much. The pain is too much. I want to encourage somebody tonight that there is no pain wasted. There is meaning to your pain. There is purpose to your pain. You need to make sense of your root tonight. Friends, the sovereign God is Lord of history. He is the Lord of the past, present, and future. The sovereign God causes kingdoms to rise and fall to his decree. Know tonight that God did not suffer a defeat when the, ki when the king of Babylon took over his children. The Bible tells us in advance his glory and our good. God in control over the affairs of men. The Bible tells us in Daniel 1 verse 2, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. Jerusalem was not captured because God was too weak to protect it. Rather, God used the heathen king to discipline his people. John Calvin wrote, King Nebuchadnezzar did not possess Jerusalem and was not the conqueror of the nation by his own valor, or, his, or counsel, or good luck, but because God wished to humble his people. I say tonight, good people suffer too when a nation comes under the judgment of God. That is good enough reason to continue praying for our country. As the teenagers Daniel and his three friends were enslaved in Babylon, God's plan for them was to be behind enemy lines, introducing and influencing the needing nations of earth and its mighty monarch for almighty God. To achieve this, Daniel and his friends needed made-up minds. They needed to settle the things they would neither negotiate nor compromise. God had to process them for greatness, and that processing is often painful. Nebuchadnezzar could change their names, but he could not change their allegiance. Because these four young people purposed in their heart, they made up their minds that they would not defile themselves with the things of Babylon. Too often, we cooperate with the enemy and then blame God for our troubles. Nor tonight, friends, that, is it, that it isn't a matter of God not covering you. Sometimes we walk away from the covering of God. Even in captivity, Daniel and his friends made a decision. 
They determined in their hearts that they wouldn't be faithful to the commitment they made to their Lord. I can imagine they checked each other. They supported each other. They held each other accountable. They celebrated each other's success. They cried together. They prayed together. We need some friends like Daniel's. Young people, too often we tell ourselves that our choice of friends does not matter. We argue with our parents when they tell us that a friend is not a good influence. But God who made us, the manufacturer, has given counsel to the wise. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26, it tells us, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the wicked leads them astray. The wise man said in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. In Proverbs 13, 20, He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. A wise person once said, you will miss your altitude by the people you ride with. We need to exercise care about who we take on our route. So friends, as these four young boys settled in the land of their captivity, they testified about their God in every area of their lives. And God honored their faith. God blessed them. God granted their success. Their fa- they found favor wherever they were placed in Babylon. Them that honor me, God says, I will all- also honor. One night, ladies and gentlemen, as Nebuchadnezzar slept, God gave him a dream. In that dream, God reveals that he is in control of human events. Let's read Daniel chapter 2 verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams with with, whether his spirit was troubled and his sleep broke from him. Friends, the king could not remember the particulars of his dream. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 5, The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. You see, friends, it is not that the king did not remember anything. He remembered something, but could not put it together. Therefore, he would have immediately noticed any false interpretations. The Chaldeans realized this and said to the king in Daniel 2, 10 and 11, There is not a man that on earth who can tell the king's matter. They were right. No king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician or Chaldeans. There is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. The king decided to kill them all. No church... Daniel was not invited to the first meeting, but Daniel was certainly have shared the, se- the death sentence passed upon all the wise men of Babylon. So Daniel requested time. Daniel requested time to speak to the God who set the king and takes them down. Daniel requested time to have a little talk with the God who is in charge of the affairs of men. Daniel requested time to call on the one true God who knows the beginning from the end. Daniel knew that just a little walk with Jesus makes it right. Daniel wasted no time, friends. He called a night of prayer. He got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they connected to the dream specialist. They prayed to the God who spake it, and it was done. They prayed to the God who turned chaos into cosmos. They prayed to the God who parted the Red Sea. And this God sent Daniel to sleep. This God gave him the same dream he gave to Nebuchadnezzar and the interpretation thereof. Hallelujah! When we pray, God delivers. 
Friends, what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed and what God revealed to Daniel has come to pass. And it is still coming to pass. Daniel outlined the dream and it details... You saw, O king, a metal man, metal man with head of gold and breastplate of arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, the leg of iron and feet and toes of iron and clay. The image, O king, represents all the kingdoms of men that will rule the world until God sets up his kingdom that shall last forever. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar that you, O king, are the head of fine gold. And after you will come another, and another, and another. History bears out the accuracy of the prophecy. Babylon ruled the world from 605 to 539 BC. Medo-Persia rules from 539 to 331 BC. Greece ruled from 331 to 168 BC, and Rome ruled from 168 BC to 476 AD. There is no ruling kingdom from 476 AD until the second coming of Christ. Why? Because the Bible tells us that the feet is made of iron and clay. Some strong nations and some weak nations and they shall not cleave to one another. In just a few words, God, through Daniel, whom had prepared for years for this very moment, outlined the history from Babylon's time all the way to the, ta- the, the, to the close of earth's history. Daniel looked separately, squarely at Nebuchadnezzar, ruler of the world's first universal kingdom, and declares, you are the head of gold, but after you shall rise another kingdom inferior to yours. There was nothing Nebuchadnezzar could do about it. Yes, he tried. He erected a monstrous image of the plains of Dura. God said, and his kingdom would be the head of gold. He built an image entirely of gold and attempted to compel the worship by threat. But three young men, three young men who God had prepared to meet this moment refused to bow. Can you see them marching with the other captives to Babylon? Do you remember them refusing to eat unclean foods from the king's table? Do you remember them building spiritual muscles years before by praying with Daniel all night? Not only for the interpretation of the dream, but for their very lives? Yes, friends. Can you see God using the twists and turns of their lives to prepare them for that moment when they stood up on the plains of Dura and refused to bow to that image the king had set up for worship. They directed everyone present that day to God, their creator. Somebody needs to hear tonight that after the showdown, almighty God was elevated by the actions of these young men far beyond the 90 feet stature of the Nebuchadnezzar built. Somebody needs as the dust settled on the, that dust up between the forces of good and evil, three young men experienced what it, ha- what it is to have Jesus show up in the midst of your fire. Oh, friends, in the hearing of my voice, didn't the God the, who created you, the God who formed you, say to you in Isaiah 43, 1-3, Fear not, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. 
We learn to make mist- we learn to make sense of our roots when we accept that God orders our steps. We learn to make sense of our roots when we accept the difficult places on that journey are God's classrooms, training and equipping us for our destiny. Fellow young people, before you walk on walk out on God, know that your struggles are God's processes of qualifying you for your responsibility. We will not qualify if we avoid responsibility. We will not qualify if we sidestep challenges. There is no short circuit in our training. Preparation is through tribulations and tests. For Daniel and his friends... It started over the simple matter of their food in captivity. The challenges got no easier, but their faith in God, ability, but their faith in God's ability to deliver them, to protect them, got stronger. Why? <laughs> they knew him personally. Yes, friends, we make sure we make sense of our roots when we surrender to Jesus because he knows the way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Blessed are they who endure to the end. The same shall be saved. We make sense of our roots when we rest in the fact that Jesus knows our destination. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 tells us, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Friends, God is setting up his kingdom soon and very soon. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 will be fulfilled. For the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. And he shall reign forever and ever. Friends, this is where our journey ends. If we surrender to God on the route, do you wish to surrender your journey to Jesus tonight? Is it your desire to become part of God's kingdom? Will you say yes to him? To those in the kingdom who are thinking of drifting out for whatever reason, consider your future. God knows your route. He mapped it out and he has known what he prepared for you at the end of your journey. Will you stand with me as we pray? There is nothing on that earth It's worth the trading of your salvation. What's next? The choice is up to you. Are you ready for Jesus to come? You'd like to say, God, my eternal security is in you. Will you stand and pray? Dear Heavenly and loving God, I thank you for carrying me through this servant, Lord Father. This message that you gave to me, Lord Father, to preach to your people, Lord Father. I hope that this message, Lord Father, would have been able to reach those, Lord Father, who may be confused and drifting away from you, Lord Father. Just like the three Hebrew boys, I want, Lord Father, to let everyone know that it is okay to feel this way, Lord Father. It is okay. And only through God can you really come back to him, the, come back to him. In your name's sake, amen. What a powerful message. I was truly touched and empowered. For the most part, we all know the story of Daniel and his three friends. And as humans, we may not have done as they did. Yes, we may not have done just as they did. But however, we must trust God no matter what situation he put us through. Let us pray to close off tonight's service. Okay, heads bowed, eyes closed. The Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, thanking you for this powerful message. I ask that you be with the preacher and his family, dear Lord. As we close off tonight's program, be with everyone. I hope that they share this message 
with anyone they come in contact with. Be with us all. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. If you receive this blessing, share that blessing by sharing the link for the crusade tonight and inviting others to join us tomorrow night. So be reminded to, to attend every night that we are on. Don't forget to say a prayer and be blessed. Amen.